How many of you guys are actually going to the solar eclipse? I know I was supposed to, but now I might have some complications. And some of you guys might as well. We do have the threat for severe weather here on Monday for portions of Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. And according to the National Weather Service's preliminary forecasts, you can see that within this red area here, which is where the path of totality is for the eclipse, there could be some areas that could have some pretty high cloud cover percentage. However, if you're still interested in viewing the eclipse, let me know if you're still going to go out in the comments down below. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome to another weather forecast discussion, this time for April 4th, 2024. Before we get started with the video, I want to thank everyone who has actually been a part of these past few days with us covering severe weather. We had a multi-day severe weather and even tornado outbreak. So uh, all the support that you guys have given me getting up to 50,000 subscribers is very, very heartwarming to me. I just absolutely love the support that you guys have been giving me. And hopefully we continue to grow more and more as a community. Before we get started, started, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below to help us promote this video onto more and more people's recommended feeds on YouTube. But what we can do for now is we can talk about the weather here in the future. Today's severe weather outlook, we have the small chance for severe weather across portions of Idaho and Montana, as well as extreme northern Nevada. Kind of a rare area if you ask me to get some severe weather, but there is the possibility over there, so please watch out for that. We also have the threat for severe weather here on Saturday. We've been talking about this before on our previous live streams, that severe weather is definitely possible across portions of the Central Plains from Nebraska all the way down into Oklahoma. So folks over there are definitely going to want to watch out as well. And then we also have the threat for severe weather here on Monday. You can see there is a 15% chance for severe weather across portions of the Southern Plains into the Deep South. And then on Tuesday, this is uh, not a repeat. You can kind of tell the difference between Monday's risk, which is on your screen right now, and then Tuesday, that the event kind of shifts off a little bit towards the south and to the south and east. And so once again, the same areas that were impacted the previous day could potentially be impacted again on Tuesday. So now we're going to take a look at the jet stream, our upper level wind shear. If you can imagine the wind shear in the upper levels of our atmosphere being similar to a river that is changing and flowing in all sorts of different directions, that is basically what we have here. Now, out in front of something called a trough, that is where we would typically look for for severe weather, which is the reason why you can see on the left part of our screen, we have a trough that's digging on through with an upper level low off the coast of California. And out in front of the trough out here is where we could potentially see some scattered activity of severe weather, which is the reason why there is the threat for severe weather in portions of Idaho and Nevada today. That will continue to move on through from Friday into Saturday. Once again, you can see out in front of the trough, this is where the localized area could potentially be for some severe weather. So uh, once again, the same old, same old that's happening in and around here. And then once we get from Monday into Tuesday, you can see once again, we have another trough that's digging on through here into the southwestern portions of the United States. And once again, out in front of the trough is where severe weather could potentially be. So Monday all the way up into Tuesday, and then we're going to have a, potentially a severe weather event as well on Wednesday, maybe even further into the south and east. That could also be a little bit more towards the Gulf Coast as well before we have uh, maybe some scattered activity on Thursday, maybe a little bit of remnants on Friday before we talk about our next little weaker system that will try and move on through sometime around the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Once that happens, maybe some marginal or slight risk style of severe weather could potentially happen there. And then as we get further and further on into the middle of April, we could be talking about once again, another active pattern for severe weather. So now we're also going to want to take a look at our moisture content or our dew points. And realistically speaking, if you can get a high relative humidity in some areas where there could be severe weather, there's a good chance that you also have maybe a few thunderstorms in there. And if moisture aided with strong thermodynamics can come together, then you could be talking about some strong severe weather. So let's first find where our moisture is, where our dew points could be rising on through. And from Friday into Saturday, you can see that moisture really starting to rise up further north. A lot of warm air advection or uh, air moving. It's uh, moving up towards the north across our central portions of the United States. You can see we have a massive dry line here as well, where we just have two air masses that are colliding with each other. Our very dry southwestern air mass, and of course our 
very moist Gulf of Mexico air mass. And the uh, convergence in between the two can create some showers and thunderstorms. So uh, areas over here from Nebraska all the way down to Oklahoma, maybe even into Texas. That is where we're going to want to watch out. But one thing that I do want to mention here is that our dew points aren't exactly the highest here across portions of the central United States. We're probably talking about 50s into 60 degree dew points. You typically want 60 degree dew points or higher in order for you to get real good sustained thunderstorm activity. This will also translate over and uh, kind of remain in this general area from Sunday into Monday. And as you can see, we have a very elongated area of moisture ranging from the border of Mexico and the United States all the way up through into portions of the Ohio River and the Mississippi River Valley. So uh, definitely something to watch out for for the potential of some remnant severe weather. And especially as we get into Tuesday, we could be talking about some more severe weather that could actually happen from once again, the deep south, the southern plains, all the way over into portions of the south and east. And then uh, once again, more severe weather Wednesday, Thursday, maybe some remnant stuff on Friday before we just kind of have a little bit of a break heading off through in towards the 13th and 14th. Not really too much moisture that is anticipated to move on through that area, but we could potentially still see some severe weather, not this weekend, but the following weekend after that. Now, I want to show you guys the convective available potential energy values. This basically measures the instability in the atmosphere. And as I've mentioned on stream, thunderstorms like one of two things from the thermodynamic perspective. You like warm, moist air, and you like strong instability. And measuring this, uh, this gives you the amount of instability that is in some of these air masses. And you want about 1,500 joules per kilogram of CAPE within a uh, usual severe weather event. So if we play on through here on Saturday, you can see we have some areas here in the brighter blues, almost even into the lighter greens. That's about 1,000 joules per kilogram. That's uh, on the lower end of things. And so as of right now, it doesn't seem too crazy as to what we could potentially see here on Saturday, but there is some energy and the models can change. They can both increase the values and decrease the values. So once again, marginally severe weather is uh, possible here in portions of the central United States. Now, as we start to move on through from Sunday into Monday, that could likely change here. You can start to see some more greens and even yellows in some of these areas, which indicate about 2,000, maybe even 2,300 joules per kilogram of CAPE. We're looking at a, maybe a maximum of 2,500 joules per kilogram CAPE for this current model run. As I said, things can easily change. So definitely the chance for severe weather over there. And then on Tuesday, you can see stuff even gets a little bit higher. We're probably talking about at most 3,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE in portions of southern Texas. And then as you go further north, maybe about 2,000 to 2,300 joules per kilogram of CAPE over there. So we do have some substantial amount of instability in place over into some of these portions of the United States. And I am really anticipating some form of severe weather in the beginning of next week. Moving off into Wednesday, you can see there could be some localized amounts of high instability into southern portions of Louisiana and Mississippi. So maybe once again, another threat for severe weather on Wednesday. And then some uh, remnant stuff, as I mentioned, on uh, Thursday is possible before we move off into our next severe weather system, which will be once again, not this weekend, but the following one. So now you guys can kind of understand what I mean by some other areas could potentially be not seeing the solar eclipse. But there are some caveats here. Uh, once again, portions of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, probably not going to see the eclipse. But some of these areas over here near St. Louis, southern Illinois, central and southern Indiana, that could be something to watch out for. And of course, you know, if you're near Montreal, Burlington, Vermont, areas up into portions of New England and the Northeast, then you guys could automatically see the uh, solar eclipse because there's just absolutely nothing going to be happening over there. So you guys over there are pretty much a lock. 
It's just these areas that are over here from Rochester all the way down through into Texas. This is a big question mark here that may not be answered until Saturday or Sunday. I think it's also important to understand why there could potentially be some cloud cover across portions of the Great Lakes and even over into portions of the Ohio Valley. So let's bring up the models. And if you remember, we have the threat for severe weather on Saturday moving off into Sunday. This is kind of our little wave of where there could potentially be some cloud cover according to at least our graphic that is down here at the bottom. So if you want to pay attention to the dark blues being area where you got some clear skies and then of course white being our heavier cloud cover, you can see that that area where there could be some severe weather, though it may not bring severe weather towards the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, it will create some denser cloud cover over into those areas. And so depending upon how significant those storms could be on Saturday, could actually determine as to how that could impact you on Sunday and even into Monday. So uh, just something to kind of watch out for as those uh, clouds continue to uh, look to be pretty sporadic. And uh, we just kind of have to hope for the best in a sense. Now, this is another perspective from the American model. You can see, once again, cloud cover is uh, pretty much likely down here into southern portions of the United States. But uh, some of these areas that are over here in the Ohio Valley, it's not as dense as some of the other models are saying. Uh, some instances we could even see not even any cloud cover. So we'll just have to see. It looks like it'll be uh, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. That'll be across some of those areas. Maybe some precipitation is also possible as well. And you can see that is the case with this model run. Uh, you can see this is the uh, probability of seeing rain that is over uh five hundredths of an inch and you can see some of these areas over here in the portions of the great lakes they're gonna be seeing a lot of rain you can also see some areas over here that are near the mississippi and ohio river delta they could see some rain it's low possibility a low percentage but there is a possibility and then of course down here in the portions of the southern united states <laughs> good luck with that good luck with that uh, now, just because now just because you aren't under the path of totality doesn't mean you can't see the solar eclipse. Of course, it's just recommended that you have solar glasses to watch with it. But uh, this will likely be moving on through across some of these areas in the southern United States, and it could uh, potentially be visible here starting at around 2, and it'll eventually move off towards the central United States at around 3 before it'll move off towards the north and east. You can see the little graphic to where the uh, moon will be uh, covering over the sun. This is where the greatest path of totality will actually be recognized. Right at around 320, that's when it could start to move off into the northeast and then eventually off into portions of eastern Canada. Now keep in mind that some of these areas will probably only see this for about at most four minutes. So make sure that you're keeping your eyes in the sky for any sort of activity. Of course, I'll put this interactive map in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment down in the comments down below. So if you guys want to interact with this nice little fun map, you guys can do that as well. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this weather briefing here for April 4th, 2024. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. That helps us spread this information with more and more people on YouTube. Also hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest weather information that we provide here on this channel. And of course, I want you guys to uh, be as safe as you possibly can. I know there's uh, going to be a lot more weather coming up because we are in the heart of severe weather season. So as always, stay safe. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.